How's it going, Reef Keepers? I figured I'd let you guys just uh, take a look at the tank as it brightens up for the day. Um, there's still a little bit of glow on the corals, which is kind of a rare thing to see in my tank because I keep it so white. But uh, what I wanted to talk about today is kind of the, the state of what it is to start out in reef keeping or be a beginner reef keeper today in 2023 terms. And uh, it's one of those subjects that's like, you know, it's a weird subject and I have my views about, you know, what the current state of all that is for beginners. And again, you know, like the last video I posted where I kind of just talk about my views about what's going on. I'm not looking to argue with anybody. Um, it, th these are just things as I see it. And uh, I don't do these videos to argue with people at all. And I welcome different viewpoints because there's so many different ways to go about this hobby and to see this hobby. And I never think that I'm right. I'm a, I'm a teacher by profession. And uh, I'm never afraid to say, I don't know. I got to look that up or I got to look more into this. So um, anyhow, all that said, I think that the state of like being a beginner reef keeper is overall pretty bad right now. And I think it's kind of, you know, in the toilet, so to speak, because there's been an erosion of like, quote unquote, true community. And by true community, I mean communities beyond the boundaries of the internet. So in-person communities, because, you know, through the last six years or so, uh, I basically, when I entered the hobby six years ago, um, me starting out in the hobby, uh, can, it, it entailed me essentially learning everything I needed to learn online and continually going to forums, Facebook groups, et cetera, et cetera, to try to gain the knowledge I needed or get the questions answered that I needed answered. And six years ago, like the forums and the Facebook groups and all that, they were less developed than they are now. And by less developed, I guess I should say more like they were more nascent. Um, and so I still think that there was, even even as, as early as, you know, three, four years ago, there was more civility going on uh, from an online standpoint. And now when I go to like beginner groups on, you know, forums or on, you know, social media, the amount of like vitriol and hatred toward beginner hobbyists that I see is uh, kind of appalling. Um, it's kind of shocking. And the people who are, you know, leveling this, some of them are beginners themselves that somehow have this sense of, you know, I'm better for some reason than other beginners, which is always confusing to me because, you know, I, I never, I never had a lack of appreciation for the fact that when I was first starting out, I, I knew nothing. And there's still days six years in where I feel like I know nothing about this hobby. Um, every day is something new that I, that I don't know. And maybe that's, maybe that reality has to be gained for some people over time through, you know, multitudes of failures. But anyway, long story short, people who are still beginners, like, you know, two or three years or less in the hobby who take it upon themselves to destroy other people who are just getting in, uh, over stuff that they may not actually know that well themselves. It, shocking to me. But more shocking to me are the veteran reef keepers who are similarly annihilating all of these people coming into the hobby who are just desperate for help, desperate for an answer. Um, I, I understand that it's frustrating, right? I understand that I understand that when you're in a Facebook group and you've you, you have a guy who's killed three fish in a row and you've asked him, you know, for his water parameters twice and both times he said my water's perfect it's not my water look i understand that the you know your your face is starting to turn different shades of red like something's going wrong here you have no idea if your water's perfect you know you joined this group you know three days ago um you know this is crazy like i, I get that frustration 
But I think it's important to note the big picture. And the big picture for reef keeping is that I don't know the numbers, but I would imagine that like eight in 10 people who try to become real reef keepers long term wash out of this hobby. I would bet it's like eight in 10. It is not an easy hobby. It requires constant dedication. It requires constant seeking of knowledge. And I would just imagine that it also it requires money. It re you, becoming a beginning reef keeper now probably more than ever requires for every death that you, you know, that happens at your hands, whether it be a, you know, a coral or a fish, it replacing that stuff is incredibly costly after the massive expensive cost of setting up a system. So at some point, I think either for financial reasons or for just, you know, frustration, dejection, people drop out of the hobby. What hurts me is people who are, you know, struggling through these early, you know, early incidents in the hobby that are discouraging and they're looking for help. And there are people who could really truly one day build the hobby. I know that some of these people, at least two in 10 of them, I would estimate, again, I have no basis for that number, but at least a couple of these people are going to, or could go on to become great reef keepers and grow the hobby in a meaningful way and someday contribute to it. But I think we're losing some of those promising people because of the toxic nature of what it is to try to find help in this hobby in today's era. And the solution, in my estimation, it's kind of a two-pronged solution, you know, um, or a multi-pronged solution. One, it, people have to stop, um, they have to stop being jerks online. They have to stop being cruel. If you don't have something productive to say, don't say it. Just stay out of it. Even if it makes you mad, even if you shake your head at it, you know, and you can't get it out of your head for a couple hours because, you know, the question was so idiotic or, or whatever. You just don't, unless you're going to try to help, just don't do anything. Um, two, people, beginning reef keepers, need to stop hoping against hope that they're going to find some answer on, like, reef to reef. Reef to Reef has all the answers in the worst way possible. It's going to have a guy who's telling you every potential answer that's out there to your question. And then those same guys are going to fight and have a 17 page all out war with each other over why each of them is respectively correct and the others are wrong. That doesn't really help either. And I think it also encourages like, you want we all when we ask a question always want one answer to be right because usually because it's the easiest or cheapest answer and so that one guy out of you know 20 people who is saying the thing you want said your hum your human brain goes oh okay one guy said it so i'm validated and that's just often the worst way to go about it it's it, and, and you learn again you learn the hard way you're going to take that easy route because one other person said oh yeah i did that and you're going to fail so older hobbyists i often rolled my eyes when i first started in this hobby when they would say you should find one or two experienced people experienced reef keepers and those are the people that you should routinely go to and ask questions about all this stuff. And only if they are completely out of answer should you look anywhere else. This it falls on deaf ears for new reef keepers. Trust me. Like, I, I'm a learner by nature. Um, I, I love to learn. I love school. I, I love it. And despite that, I looked at those older hobbyists and I was like, why would I need to do that? I can conduct my own research. I'm there's there's forums upon forums upon forums of people, you know, talking about this stuff, Facebook groups that are active. I, I why would I need to find someone where I could get these answers from when I could just get them from everyone? And reef keeping is very much a hobby in which getting answers from everyone is going to be to your detriment. You might get lucky here and there, but it's going to ultimately be to your detriment. Um, 
I think that there's a lot of stock in the, you should find one or two very experienced reef keepers. And those are the people that you should listen to. And those are the people whose answers and opinions you should bank on because they've been through it. They've seen it. They know what's going on. And it's a hundred percent true as far as I can see. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's totally possible an older reef keeper with more experience is, you know, a jerk in their own right or an ignorant person. I mean, those people exist, but experience is experience at some level. And it's a better bet than wading through the cesspool that is reef to reef in 2023 or, you know, whatever Facebook group you pick out of the lineup. It's, it's way better. Um, the other thing that I, I just, I, I don't know how to solve this. And I lament that it is, you know, it is the way it is. It used to be before the era of the internet. And I, of course I didn't witness this. I only hear stories of it and I wish it was my reality, but the reality of the reef keeping hobby for years and years and years was that if you wanted community, you had to physically go and meet and have meetings with reef keeping societies, right? Like you had to actually go and meet up at whatever, at a guy's house, at the bar, at, you know, whatever, conventions um, for frag swaps and stuff like that. You had to go meet people and you had to actually commune with them and troubleshoot stuff. You had to pick up the phone, God forbid, and call people and have lengthy conversations. It, it's it, that sense of community I feel like for all but the older reef keepers and maybe a few young people who've discovered these groups of older, more experienced reef keepers and have like the time and are in geographic proximity to go to meetings and stuff like that. There's just this very small sliver of the hobby that still f either feels that these are accessible or, you know, feels like they have the time to do it. I'm not really sure why the prevalence of in-person reef keeping groups has plummeted, but it just seems like those are not prevalent anymore. Um, and there might be people out there, older reef keepers who are like, Oh, they're totally prevalent. Like I'm in one. And it's like, yeah, in, in your sphere, in your demographic, it's prevalent. But I can tell you with confidence, I've talked to many younger reef keepers, many, many, many of them. And they're not prevalent anymore. Um, not for younger generations. They're just not, that's, we don't know that world. We don't know what these things are called. We don't know where they meet. We don't know, you know, anything about that universe. And that universe, I think, is what added tremendous value to the hobby. And like the word society is right in the name of many of these groups. And I really think it made reef keepers kind of a subset of society. I mean, I really do. I think that it, it created connective threads and, and added real strength to the hobby. Whereas now the hobbies, all these disparate players, all these, all these disparate people who are all screaming into the void, whether at each other or just into the void in general, into the, into the blackness. And it's all noise. It's just, it's just noise when you're trying to start in this hobby. And there's a few bright spots. You know, you could go back and watch the like season one of, you know, BRS 52 weeks of reefing, or, you know, you might find one guy on the forums who's, who's always going to respond to your DM and help you through stuff. Or, you know, you may find a YouTube channel that's like, you know, with an, with, from an experienced reef keeper who's, you know, totally dedicated to responding to, you know, every question and comment and, and give you his email address and, you know, help you through problems. And, you know, that stuff may exist for, for younger beginning reef keepers. Um, but it's hard to find. It's needle and haystack type stuff. And that's to say nothing of the challenge of like, how do I, how do I become a part of these reef keeping societies? Um, that's that's beyond the realm of imagination for many, many, many beginning reef keepers. And I think also that these societies, now, I, now again, I'm, I don't know firsthand, but I do see a lot of frustration from more experienced reef keepers out there about like the quote unquote new generation reef keepers. They think that 
basically they think the kids are annoying, you know, and maybe the kids are annoying. Um, <laughs> I, I teach the kids and I can tell you there are many days where I, I'm like, the kids are annoying, but they're still kids. They're still the future of the hobby, right? Like, you know, and I understand that they might be 25, but in reef keeping terms, the, those are the kids of, of our hobby and they got to be helped, right? I mean, if we want to yield the best quality reef keepers that actually grow the hobby in meaningful ways, right? Like they got to be helped um, because not every LFS can be banked on to actually truthfully shoot people straight. You know, not every LFS is going to stop somebody from buying that dory fish they always wanted and throwing it in a 20 gallon water box. There, there are, there are LFS store, stores out there that would just be like, yeah, go ahead. I mean, it, you, there has to be some, you know, level of community here. And I feel like, I, and again, this is where I can't pose a solution. I can't even, you know, I'm not that far into thinking about this, but I feel like reef keeping societies, if they want to stay relevant in the very long term, you know, eventually people are just, you know, they age out of being able to keep up with this stuff or they, they age out of it in, in just in interest terms. They've, they've, they've done it. They're done. Um, or they pass away. And eventually those groups will shrink and they'll be tasked with finding a way to keep themselves alive when, you know, way too late or they'll cease to exist and then we'll all have lost for that. So if, if any of you guys are members of these groups, you know, kind of the challenge I would pose, and I mean, I'm sure some groups are doing it. I'm not saying it's across the board, no groups are doing it, but some of these, you know, in-person reef keeping society type groups um, I would encourage you guys to try to find a way to recruit and try to find a way to reach out and really actively recruit. Even if, even if you're like, oh man, you know, we don't want a bunch of these annoying kids saying all these, you know, new weird words at our meeting or, whatever, you know, like, I don't know any of the new, the new age terms anyway, you know, the, like, I, I don't know what bet means. I don't, I don't know what any of that stuff means, but, um, I just feel like, for the longevity of the hobby and the quality of the hobby and the health of the hobby, these communities are critical. And I just, I, I, I want them to find a way to start helping guide greater numbers of, of beginning reef keepers. Because like I said, the rest of it for, for newbies in this hobby, it's just, it's just toxic noise now. So um, anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you for listening to me ramble again. I hope you enjoyed, you know, watching the tank for a little bit. Um, feel free to disagree. Like, I'm not trying to disagree or ruffle any feathers, I promise you. Um, these are just, this is just from where I stand in my small little, you know, rural community, you know, looking out at the greater reefing world. It's, it's just thoughts I have. So I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys following along. Please like and subscribe. I would love to have uh, more followers. Um, I, I, I love doing this. So thanks, guys. Have a good one.